It is past time for us to get started this morning. Life beyond death is our topic this morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We are thankful that he rose. On uh, Today is March the 31st. Our devotion reading is Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 14. 21 through 23, 26 through 31. Our background scripture is Mark chapter 16. And our printed text is Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. We do encourage you to read the entire chapter of Mark 16 so you'll know what's going on in the beginning and you'll know what happened in the end. So we do encourage you. Our devotion reading this morning. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, uh, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? And it is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it, has, for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you, which, which he will to show you today. For the Egyptian whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall behold your peace. And 21 through 23, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by, the, uh, by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on their left. And the Egyptian pursued and went in after them, to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And then 26 through 31, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptian, upon their chariots, and upon their horses, horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptian fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained, it, there remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them in the right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord, sir, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And, and Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Let us pray this morning. Tell me, Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to travel up and down these days of highways safely. And Father, we thank you for allowing us to come here at Mount Zion one more time. And Lord, we thank you for being God and being God all by yourself, Father. We thank you for this Sunday school lesson that is sent down in our hearts so that we might be more doers of your word and not just hearers only. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you for Jesus who came, bled, suffered, and died and rose that Thursday morning, Father, so that we might live again. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for Jesus, Father, because without him we are nothing. And, Father, we thank you that he sits at your right hand, Father, to make it intercession for us. And, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for being just that kind of God. Father, we thank you for our pastor. Father, we know that he's going to walk, Father, and Amen. we just thank you. We thank you for being just that kind of God, Father. Lord, we love you, and we praise your holy and righteous name. Father, we just ask that you bless the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, Father. Be with us this day, Father. Be with us right now, Father. Open up our hearts and our minds so that we can receive everything that you have for us this day. Father, we ask that you bless the teacher that's going to stand here this morning. Father, we just thank you for being just that kind of God. These are another blessing we ask in thy son, Jesus' name, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Sister Amen. Maddie. and have our Resurrected Sunday. You know, we did that a few times, and I used to say, my goodness.
goodness. Why we gotta get up so early to come? But I never said that to mama because, uh, you know, mama would have knocked you down. But I sure thought it. I was wondering why we had to get up so early to come. But it's just like the uh, women in this uh, Resurrected Sunday. They got up very early in the morning. You know, I brought this sheet of paper. It said the Passion Week. Reverend Colin gave this to us probably 30 years ago. <laughs> Long time ago. And you know, I wished way back then, we used to have Sunday school um, uh, meeting at 6 o'clock, and then at 7 o'clock we had Bible class, go over the different books in the Bible, and just all kind of good stuff. And I wish I had paid more attention. I would know more today if I had listened. You know, and it's just like with these people here in the lesson today, if they had just listened. But you know, sometimes we listen, but we don't hear. And that's exactly what they were doing in this lesson. They heard, but they didn't see. But you know, Jesus always foretell us what's gonna happen. Now, this was no surprise. He had told them over and over and over and over again what was going to happen. But was it disbelief? You know, I, I thought about he had raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised Jerry's daughter from the dead. He got all power. Why could he not raise himself? But anyway... We'll get into it. This resurrection is one of the truth of the gospel. And, you know, we had a good time this week. And uh, Reverend Wilson taught some good messages. But like Paul said, when you're talking about the gospel, it's all going to be the same, no matter who's teaching it. So did you learn anything new? Because we've already been taught that. We didn't learn anything new. It's just another technique that he used. But he told the same story that we have heard over and over again. And, you know, that makes me proud because I know I'm getting the word. So anybody who comes and speak, they're not telling me anything new because we heard it before. Now, whether we listen and whether we do is another story. But I just want to go over there because last Sunday, you know, he preached about the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. I'm just going to run down this list. Now, we're going to get to the lesson, of course. And it said, Monday, fig tree curse and the temple cleansed. And we all remember that. Okay, Tuesday had the last sermon and the anointing of Mary at the feast and Judas contracts the betrayal. Now, you know, that's a lesson for us. I mean... Jesus is just the exact example we need to follow. Because look at Judas. Now, Judas was walking with Jesus for three years, talking to him, his best buddy, best friend, talking to him. And then he's going to betray him for 30 pieces of silver? I mean, it's like stabbing you in the back for your best friend. And what did he do? He didn't reprimand Judah. You know, when Judas went up there and kissed him, did he say, get away from me? That's probably what we would have said when we know that he, is, hey, he has stabbed us in the back. You know, we will, oh, couldn't stand it. But what did he do? He said, that's what he said at the Lord's Supper, but now on the night that he betrayed him and he came up and gave him a kiss, he said, listen, he didn't rebuke Judas. He rebuked all them folks coming with the swords and the staves. He said, listen, why are you just coming to me now? Of course, if Judas hadn't told him, they wouldn't know where to find him in the first place. But he said, why are you coming to me now? I was with you every day in the temple. Why are you coming at night doing these things with swords and staves? You know, he rebuked them. He didn't rebuke Judas. Right. So what that saying to us? We need to be forgiven like 
we need to be forgiven, even those who stab us in the back. We need to forgive. And that's a big chore now. I'm telling you, it's a big chore. We got a long way to go because, look, I ain't quite there yet. You know, especially you my best friend, and you're going to stab me in the back. You know, I want to treat you right. I'm going to treat you right, but, you know, I probably wouldn't have nothing else to do with you. But now, uh, he knew all this. He knew all of this. Matter of fact, he gave him opportunity to change, but he said no. He didn't do it. Okay, let me go on. Wednesday said nothing happened. And then Thursday you had the Passover, and then you had the Lord's Supper. You know, he told them at the Lord's Supper. When I rise again, when I rise, I said, I'll go before you in Jerusalem. He told them. He told them at the Garden of Gethsemane, my time is near. Y'all wake up. My time is near. Don't go to sleep. I am sorrowful. You know, that again show us the human flesh. He has done everything that we think we're going to do. I mean, he's been through it, but yet he didn't see it. You know, he went through torment that night. It said his heart was troubled when he went in that Gethsemane Garden. And he prayed. And that human flesh got next to him. Because he prayed and said, Lord, Father, if you would just take this cup from me. You know, he was saying, I, I, I'm fearful of this. I am sorrowful for this. And then when he went back and he told his disciples to watch, what did they do? Went to sleep. I mean, Lord. So anyway, he went back and he finally got himself together. That 100% God took over that 100% human body, and he said, whatever your will is, yeah. I will do. And see, he was human. He felt the pain and the suffering that we go through when we suffer. Amen. That's why he can relate to anything that we go through. Amen. You know, that's why we should have faith. We should believe what he says. He said, we know the scripture just like Reverend said. Well, you know, some of them. Uh, you know that he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's always with you. How can he leave you if you got the Holy Spirit in you? He can't leave you. He goes everywhere you go. Amen. You know, and he's already foretold you what's going to happen. So what are we waiting for? Why do we have doubt? Why these women are unexpectedly Seeing that he is risen. Why is that doubt there? Why is it unexpected? He has told them over and over and over again. But yet they did not hear. Tell me, what were they thinking? What were they expecting for Jesus Christ to do down here on this earth? What was, what was he expecting? What did they expect him to do? They're going to fight the battle. They're going to make the kingdom, uh, they're going to make Israel the kingdom on earth. Right. And therefore, you're going to remove Rome and free them. That's what they all thought. Yeah. I mean, the disciples even thought that too. Yeah. So, but what was he here for? He told us. He said he wanted to save. He came down here to seek that which was lost. You know, he came down here to seek that which was lost. When he was on the cross, he was still saving folks. Because who did he save on the cross? The thief who had talked about him, mocked him. But he realized who he was because he said, just like the pastor said the other night, we deserve this. But... He, done, he ain't done anything. He doesn't deserve this. So, that's unbelief, y'all. But then it says, wash the feet, prayer in Gethsemane, and then a rest in the trials. Now, they did arrest him. They hung him on the cross. Now, they, everybody say that the cross was such a disgrace. Why was it a, such a disgrace? He hung up there, nails in a hand, 
in his feet, stabbed him in the side. But why is it such a disgrace? It was the worst place in Rome to be hung on a tree. I mean, that was the disgrace is because only the worst, the worst, were hung on the tree. And back in Deuteronomy, it tells you that, you know, curse is the man to hang on the tree, and you got to bury him before that same day that he died. So, I tell you, it was a disgrace. And they put him in the middle, which was supposed to be the worst of the worst. So that was told. What did they do to him? What else did they do to him? You know, what I thought was so fascinating was that the chief priest was one of the main ones in there. And the strides, they knew the law. I mean, this was disgraceful. It's just like having all the preachers come up here and then, you know, rail on somebody. You know, just show no respect whatsoever. You know, those are the ones who's supposed to be standing up for them. That's a shame. As an example for us, we need to stand tall. We need to be a witness like Stephen was. We don't need to be like these chief priests and scribes. And then, when he hung on the cross, what was, why did God send him down here to hang on the cross? Why did God send him down here? To redeem man back to God for all our sins in the past, the present, and the future, that we will have forgiveness of sin. Because before then, what happened? You had to go for atonement on the Passover. Once a year, you go and kill some uh, animals and put it on the altar. That's right. If it didn't go, if the smoke didn't go up, hey, you got to go back for another year. You know, think about all those people who died in their sin. But when he died, he changed all of that. You know, it said he ripped the veil from top to bottom. Now, that's indicating to us that we have total forgiveness of sin if we want it. And that we can go straight to him. We ain't got to go through no priest. We can talk to him any time of the day and night. Now, that's a blessing. Amen. You know, think about having to wait a year to go talk to the priest and then talk to the priest and then you still don't get forgiveness. Well, they couldn't t totally forgive you, but that's what they said. Because only God can give you the forgiveness. So the atonement that was given to him. And what else happened at the cross? One of them confessed, and he said, I'll see you today in my paradise. Okay, what else happened at the cross? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Look at him. Take care of my mother. John did that. What else? What else happened on the cross? I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, it, I mean, you got to read all four chat, uh, gospel now in order to get the full story. Go ahead. One thing when he died, you know, the earth, everything just went dark. Yes, yes. And then those people that were asking for the cross, the Roman soldiers said, "Ooh, wait a minute, we done made a mistake." That's right. This was the centurion mm -hmm. became. I mean, he knew at that time it was the son of God. Right. Up until then, he was. He was right there with all the rest of them. What was significant about the darkness? It was dark from 12 to 3. Or what is it, 6 hours to ninth hour? 12 to 3. It was dark the whole three hours. Sin. All right, sin. That was the time he was taking on all our sins. You know, and he said, you know, he said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? You know, because he can't look upon sin. 
So he had, you know, can you imagine the feeling of Jesus? I mean, who had been with his father all his life in his bosom, and he is taking on all this sin of ours. And his, oh, the father turned his back on him. I mean, that is heartbreaking. But he did it for us, not for himself. He said he did it for the just and the unjust. He gave us the privilege of being reconciled back to his father. Remember, Paul told us that. Um, well, I won't go there. Okay. Recognize back to the Father. He gave us the opportunity to go back, be able to go back to the Father. So therefore, that three hours, then after he died, what happened? Bodies come out of the grave. That was always fascinating to me, that earthquake again. Yes, fascinating. We're going to have to talk about that sometime because I'm still not quite clear about all that. But uh, yes. Okay, what else? What? They gamble for his clothes. And I was, uh, this time I read, I, I realized it was a seamless coat. I don't know how it becomes a seamless coat. He said uh, it was a seamless coat, so therefore they didn't want to tear it and mess it up, so that's why they gamble for it. You know, I mean, that's fascinating. There's a lot of fascinating stuff in there. What else happened? This is an old story. Everybody knows this. Come on, y'all. What else happened at the cross after he died? They took him down. Who took him down? Was it the soldiers? Who took him? Joseph or Abathia or whatever. I can never remember that. And Nicodemus was there. You know, I didn't even know that uh, Joseph and Nicodemus was part of the Sahedra Council. You know, I, I didn't realize that. One of the books was talking about how he was one of the Sahedric. Now, you know, he couldn't agree with what took place. They were saved, right? Who? Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, they didn't agree with what went on. But Joseph is the one who took the body down because he wanted to take it down before the Sabbath day. And going back to what uh, 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 Sheila said was that, you know, you don't want hanging on the tree is cursing. And when they die, you need to get him down the same day you die. Yes. That's what uh, Deuteronomy says back there. So therefore, they had to take him down before the Sabbath day because on the Sabbath day, you couldn't do anything. So they had to get him in the grave before the Sabbath day. But it's fascinating that some of the commentaries say that the day before is supposed to be preparation day. You know, they're supposed to be preparing the temples in order to get ready for the feast. But instead, they were killing Jesus. You know, that's, that's a going back to those chief priests. That's somebody who we definitely don't want to establish. But after Joseph took the body down, he buried it in his own tomb. And he bought some linen, and he wrapped it up. He wrapped them up in it, and he laid it in the tomb. And Nicodemus bought 75 pounds of uh, myrrh and aloe and spices and put it on the body. Okay, then they left. How did the women know that where the body lay? They followed him. They followed him. They saw it, and they marked. And again, you know, at the Last Supper, Jesus told them, he said, all of y'all going to be offended, and you're going to scatter. But they, they said, uh-uh, no, we're going to, uh-uh, we're going we gonna to be with you forever. And what old Peter say? Oh, yes, I will f never forsake you, you know. And then he told him, he said before, we'll have denied me three times. You know, that's that confidence that Peter had, uh, knowing what he was going to do. See, we can get too confident. We need to be depending on Jesus Christ. You know, because when you get too confident, he going to knock you down. You know, and he sure knocked Peter down. Okay, now, then it said body in the grave and then the resurrection. And that's where we come in this uh, day. Now, look at this. It says, encountering the unexpected. Now, here are the women. How is it unexpected? I mean, I understand they were grieving. 
You know, sometimes when you're grieving, you just forget all things that you've heard, you know, and, and you just can't concentrate. So, you know, I, I mean, I can understand this, that you have forgotten what your Lord said. But anyway, it says, and when the Sabbath day passed. Now, when he was buried on the Sabbath day, he rose on Sunday. So what did that change? That was a new covenant, right? Because this is the reason we are here today, on Sunday instead of Saturday, because he died and he rose on Sunday. So that's changed that new covenant. Also, the atonement, you know, it changed all that. Okay, it says, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And as she'll say it, they followed them. Uh, when they buried him, mark the grave so they'll know exactly where to go when, when the time came. Because they knew that they couldn't go on Sunday or that Saturday. So therefore, they waited till Sunday to go early that morning to a spice. It. Now, the reason they said and count the unexpected is uh, coming up in a minute. It said, and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into a sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Very early, and like I said, we used to do that too. Because I was saying, my Lord, why so early? <laughs> you know, why so early? <laughs> I want to do some sleeping here. You know, but we came, they came early in the morning at the rising of the sun, and that's what we did too. And they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? You would think they would have thought about that. They're they not thinking. I mean, you know the stone is there because you were there when they rolled it on there. And here you coming along with women, knowing you can't move no stone. So why don't you get the disciples or somebody to come with you and say, I need for you to roll away the stone so I can do the spices on my Lord. They were hiding. They were not to be found. I thought it was significant, y'all that we talking about women, not the disciples. You know, most time you're talking about disciples. But see, Lord just show you, women are critically important in this world. You know, and this is a time where it shows that it was the women who were going to anoint their Lord. So, I mean, it's significant. I mean, that's a small thing, but it's significant to me. And they say it. Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the supposed? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. Now, ain't that fantastic? See, that's just letting us know that when you are seeking the Lord, God will remove any difficulties you got in order to get to him. You know, all we got to do is pursue him. You know, and you know, in the other... Um, Gospel, it said that the women didn't even know about the men who was guarding the temple. Now, isn't it amazing that the demons, well, okay, the other people, unsaved people, um, remembered that he was going to rise. That's why they put the guards on the gate. They said, we are not going to have them coming out, taking them and saying that he rose. You know, and even afterward, they paid him money to go out and tell somebody, that tell everybody that he didn't rise. Somebody stole the body. They came and stole the body. So it's, it's just unexpected. And then he said, after entering into the supposed, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they was frightened. You know, just about everywhere you see in the uh, Bible where an angel is seen, they are frightened. They are frightened. But the title says, Encounter the Unexpected. You know, this is a, a, you know, every story in the Bible is an example for us to do or not do. This is one of the things we ought not to do. You know, we should take God at his word. Amen. And when he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So we don't have to second guess whether or not he's going to do it. Everything that he said here has come to pass. Not one iota has been changed as to what he said. He said his legs wouldn't be broken. They weren't broken. They said he's going to be beaten and smocked and spit upon. That happened. He's going to go from judgment hall to judgment hall. That happened. 
So why are we doubting what God says? Just like he said the other day, that old flesh. Like Paul said, when I want to do good, that I don't do. That I want not to do, that's what I do. You know, that's old flesh. This flesh is evil. Adam sinned, and we all became sinners. So the second Adam came so that we can be saved if we want to be. He said, whosoever want to be. It common the unexpected. This should not be an unexpected. Okay, then it goes on and said, the unexpected assignment. And he said unto them, be not frightened. You see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, and he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Okay, then he said, but go your way and tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you in Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. Now, you know, in the other gospel, they talked about, and I remember Reverend Colton having a sermon on this where he talked about the linen, and it couldn't be stolen because nobody going to steal the body and then fold up the linen right. and then fold up the napkin over here. And it said that the napkin represented that he's coming back right. because it's just like when you're eating at the table, you don't throw your plate on uh, napkin on your plate on, unless you're finished. But you fold it up and put it on the side because you're coming back and finish your plate. So Jesus is coming back and finish the plate. So what, Jesus coming back? Do we believe that Jesus is coming back? If you're saved, you know he's coming back. And what are he coming back to do? He's going to take us home. Because, oh, that's good. He's he going <laughs> to... He, he, he going to take us home. He said he's going to prepare a place for us. And he is. It's going to be beautiful. And then it said, they, this is the sad part, y'all. It said, and they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Are we afraid? Why don't we tell people? We're afraid. Just like Rem said the other son, we close the door when the Jehovah Witness coming because we can't compete with them. We can't be like Stephen and be, stand firm and let us know what we know about Jesus. Because we don't know what we ought to know, so therefore we can't stand firm. So we close the door so we won't have to. And therefore, huh? And therefore we don't go out and tell people because we're scared. We scared what they're going to say. And therefore, we are not a witness. Because what he tells his disciples, go ye therefore and teach all nations. He said it in Mark. He said, go to the in uttermost part of the earth and tell people. Now, if the story ended here, We'll be afraid, wouldn't tell nobody. But it looked like the story did end here because we're not telling nobody. <laughs> you know? We need to tell people. I mean, I'm guilty just like everybody else. I don't tell people like I need to tell people. You know? Oh, I, I don't know what. Oh. I don't know how to tell you. It doesn't make any difference how you take it. You just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. They either accept it or not. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. But thank God it didn't end like this. What happened? They did go and tell Peter, all the disciples. But listen, why did he mention Peter by name? Peter was outspoken. Yeah. Well, one reason mentioned Peter because Peter had denied it. Right? Three times. Mm -hmm. And so Peter felt not part of the group. Right. Right. Yeah, he was out of the cut. Out right. Because now look, if you had denied Jesus three times, and now you are with the disciples, you feel like you are no longer part of them. 
because you have deserted your Lord. And then you probably thinking that they thinking that I have deserted them too, so I'm not really part of the disciple. And I know he feels good in shame. And he it happens just like Jesus said. Exactly. And I know when I let him down, you, I am ashamed. Just because like. Know what that's right. I did we, it. Jesus said I was. Yeah. And I just did it. Yes. Yes, and we all do it because we made of that flesh. But, you know, even though his disciples scattered and went everywhere, hiding, God was still looking there. He was still caring for them, just like with us. When we know we are doing stuff, we know, know we ought not to do. Jesus is still caring for us. Amen. It's just like the sermon the first night. He said, God will take care of you. Yes. Now, hadn't he taken care of you? Yes. Isn't he going to take care of you? Yes, yes he is. Yes. So, therefore, Peter, he, he wanted to ensure Peter, mm -hmm. listen, I still love you, Peter. Amen. Even though you deserted me, even though you uh, you denied me three times, I still love you, Peter. You are still, I still got work for you to do. And listen, if you read further, Peter did some work. I mean, he was forgiven, and he did some work. So we need to get up because he has forgiven us, and we need to do some work. And he said, go to the other most part of the earth. Now, he's talking to us, his saved one. We are the one who's supposed to be walking and talking and moving for him. Now, how can we move if we don't do nothing? So we got to move for him and tell everybody. And what are we going to tell him? All right, the truth. We're going to tell him the truth. Because the truth is about the gospel, and the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. And that's the last. Thank you, Sister Matt. <laughs> <laughs> for that wonderful lesson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But we should all go out and tell. We should not be afraid. We should go out and we should tell. Because that's where we get our crowns. We go out and we draw other people to Christ. So the thing for this week, who are you going to tell? And what are you going to tell? That's our thing for this week. Who are we going to tell and what are we going to tell? Because we've got to tell somebody something. Because people are hurting in this world. And so what are we doing? The only thing we can, we can offer material things, but the most important thing to offer is Christ. Amen. When we offer Christ, Christ makes a difference. But they have to see the difference in us. Yes. We tell them, and then we have to start talking a little bit different. Yes. And we have to start moving a little bit different. So that's our thing. We have to offer Christ because I tell my people, I want you to go where I'm going. And the only way you're going to know where I'm going, you got to come and learn what I'm learning. So we have to invite people to come out to Sunday school and to come out to Wednesday night Bible study because once we tell them, we got to get some information in them. And the only way you're going to get that information in them is if you bring them to where uh, education is being taught. And we learn here at Mount Zion. So we do encourage you all to come on back out to Wednesday night and be a part of our Sunday school. On next Sunday, our lesson is our devotion, uh, help, helping a friend in need is our lesson. Our devotion reading is John chapter 4, verses 4 through 18. Our background scripture is Luke chapter 5, verses, I'm sorry, our background scripture is Luke chapter 5, and our printed text is also Luke chapter 5. We do encourage you all to come on and be a part of our Sunday school. Tonight we are Galatians Chapter 5, I think it's chapter 5, isn't it? Chap I'm sorry, chapter 4, I'm ready here. Well, it's Galatians chapter 4, if you all want to continue to read with us, that's where we are on today. We thank you all for with being a part of our Sunday school, and we invite you on next Sunday. <laughs>